Interacting with third-party providers is one of the most annoying things in software development, at least for me. Um, simply because so many things can go wrong. First, you're communicating through the network to a party that you to, to code that you did not own, so you don't have control over it. It's harder to test, and sometimes you have you know annoying things like being coupled to a certain provider and having to change that. For example, maybe you started using Savvy Call for your software and you want to change into Call.com or into Calendly or something like that. Or you started using Stripe and you want to switch to something like Lemon Squeezy or Paddle. I don't know, those are just examples. But it happens quite frequently. That's, that's not a very unusual scenario. You want to change things midway or you want to change your implementation. And there's a specific way that I like to talk to third-party providers and that's what I want to show today. Another annoying thing for when dealing with third-party providers is definitely testing. Uh, testing sometimes is hard and the approach I'm going to show you solves two problems. It first solves the coupling problems so you're not coupled to a specific provider and it also solves the second problem which is testing. It makes testing very very easy. So let's jump into the code and check that out. So here's a very simple example. We have an asset. This is going to be a model. We have this update crypto price class, which is some sort of command or action. And we have this Coinbase asset information provider. And we're going to explain each one of them right now. So this is just an example from a software I'm writing. We have an asset, which is a model. An asset has a price. And we want to keep assets price updated. So if you have a crypto coin that's an asset, you want to make sure that you can update its current price. And we're using Coinbase to do that. So we have a third party provider. Let's look at some code now. So here we have a class responsible for updating a crypto asset price. As you can see, it takes an asset. This is PHP, by the way. And it also takes a Coinbase asset information provider. It uses a provider to fetch the coin price and then it simply updates the asset's current price. If we look at the Coinbase implementation, pretty simple. It just makes a call to a Coinbase API and returns this crypto coin um, instance. If we look at the task, pretty simple as well. I'm actually not testing anything. I'm just dumping this. We create an asset with um, this price. Then we call the job and then we check the asset's new current price. As you can see, it is different from what it passed here. So this is working. Um, this is almost $70,000. All right, cool. So what, what is the problem here? Well, the first problem is we are very tightly coupled to this Coinbase implementation. If we ever want to switch from Coinbase to Binance, we would have a problem or to even a different provider. And the second problem is we are testing this update crypto price class and we are interacting with Binance through it because it is a dependency of the class and we're making an HTTP call. As you add more of those throughout your project, your test rate tends to get slower. It tends to get flakier and you might have problems with rate limiting and whatnot. So not a best practice. Let's go back into this whiteboard. So the first problem we want to tackle is uh, being coupled to Coinbase. And the second problem is testing. Well, usually when you have a scenario like this one, when you're coupled to something like Stripe or Coinbase or anything like that, when testing, what people tend to do is to create a mock during runtime and you have this mocked object. Um, you make calls into the mocked object and therefore you can test this without interacting with the actual provider. My problem with this is a mock is a fake version of the target class that's created during runtime and it might not actually reflect reality. So let's see how we could do that here. Well, what we could probably do is we could create a mock like this. We're going to use mockery. So we can say in this using PHP and surely there are different versions for different languages. So you could create a mock, not of this class, sorry, of the Coinbase asset information provider. And you could um, have the mock expect a fetch coin price method and return, let's say, um, new crypto coin, something like this. Okay, thank you, Copilot. So, here we have a mock and we're returning this value. So if we run this test, well, nothing happens because we're using the container to substitute this. So we could either pass that explicitly. In this case, I'm just going to replace this within the container. Thank you, Copilot, again. 
So we are replacing the Coinbase Asset Information Provider with a mock. Let's run this. And it failed. So argument one provider, we got a composite. So we got to do get mock here. Sorry about that. And now, as you can see, we're getting the mocked value. Now, mocks are very, very, very hard to maintain. They're hard to refactor because they're not actual objects within your system. They're prone to failure because you might return something that's just not, it doesn't fit with reality. And overall, I, I try not to use them as long as soon. I mean, if I don't have an option, I'll use them, but I try to avoid them. So let's get rid of this and let's look at a different approach. The first thing we want to tackle is being coupled to Coinbase. So what we can do here is to actually have an abstraction. So I'm going to get rid of this. And we're going to have an abstraction called Asset Information Provider. That's going to be an interface. So now we're saying that update crypto price depends on Asset Information Provider. And we can have Coinbase be an implementation of an interface. And we can also make Binance an implementation of this interface. And we can also make Kraken an implementation of that interface. So now we have three providers that all implement the same API. So they have the same methods. And now each one of those can have their own implementation. And we don't really care about that. Maybe Coinbase is just an API call. Maybe Binance requires authentication. Maybe Kraken does something a little different. But the point is, they all return the same thing. They all return the same object. They all take the same method with the same signature and they all have the same type. And I already have this done on this project. Uh, I actually changed it uh, to give you guys that example. If we look at Coinbase Asset Information Provider, it implements a crypto asset information provider, which takes a fetch coin price method and returns a crypto coin. So this is really important. What we usually see in those implementations is, say we just got the price from Coinbase and you just return this, and this is going to be uh, an array. And then you take that into your class and you do something with the value. So if we were to have multiple implementations doing things that way, each implementation would return something slightly different because those responses are going to be different between providers and you would have a hard time dealing with that. So the first thing you want to do is to standardize that return. As soon as you have that return type and, and method signatures and whatnot, standardize, and obviously you can do that within an interface. So we have that defined here on this public contract. Now we can ensure that all of our implementations are going to return the same thing. So that now means that this asset information provider is used by update crypto price and update crypto price no longer knows whether it is Coinbase or Binance or Kraken. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to undo the changes here. I'm going to remove this and do um, asset information provider, crypto asset information provider, sorry. And if I rerun this, let's see what happens. It still works. And the reason this works is because this is using the Laravel container behind the scenes. And if we go into our exchange service provider, I am binding this to an actual implementation. So this is the default implementation for crypto asset information provider. But within your application, you might also use a the factory pattern to determine which implementation should be used, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And obviously you can just be very explicit about this. And you can do something like new, update crypto price tracker, uh, crypto price asset, and handle and pass the actual provider you want to use. And as long as it is an instance of crypto asset provider, it will work. So let's run this. Same thing, it works. And now we're not using the container. So let's go with that example. So we already solved this coupling problem. And now you may think, okay, but if I'm going to support different providers, how do I handle that? Well, you can store which provider was used maybe within your model or have a separate table to handle that or something like that. But you can have identification saying, okay, you know, uh, the driver was Coinbase and the driver ID or, you know, driver record ID. If you're talking, for example, about payments, you can pass that. Or you can go even further. Let's say that you have payments, right? Let's go with another example. Let's say that you have a payment. And then within your payment, you're going to have a driver and you're also going to have payment details. And depending on the platform, you might get different details. So maybe you can have a table specifically for Stripe. You can have a table specifically for uh, Lemon Squeezy. And you can have a table with data specific um, to Paddle. 
And you can have all of those relate to the payment. And within the payment, you can store which driver was used, if it was Stripe, Lemon Squeezy, or Paddle. And you would know at runtime where to pick information from and which information is available. So lots of ways that you can do this. But the point is, you probably want to record uh, to store in your records which driver was used when you have multiple implementations. So now that we solved this, you're going to notice the task in this is going to be super, super simple. What if we just add a new driver called in-memory asset information provider, like this? Well, if we have an in-memory implementation that implements this interface, we can just have it return fake data. And now we are all following the same contract, so we know it works. We can use this fake implementation in tasks, and we can have separate tasks for each one of those, one task for each one of them, unit tasks, to ensure that they work themselves. And if we know that this works by itself, this works by itself, this works by itself, and that this works using the memory implementation, since they all implement the same API, we know that it works. Um, so what we would do is each one of those would have their own tasks, because you want to make sure that your integration with, you know, a Binance or Kraken or whatever else you're using, um, you want to make sure that it works. And then within your tasks, within when you're testing a target, when you're testing a class that depends on this abstraction, you can just use the in-memory implementation. So let's take a look into that. Let's create a new class here. We're going to call it um, in-memory crypto, crypto, oh, just in-memory asset information provider. And we want this to implement the crypto asset information provider. We want to add the methods. And now we can add some helper methods for our tests. We can say something like set current price for asset. So we take a ticker and we take a money object to represent the current price and we can just return void. And then we can have an internal array. Let's do something like, we can say that we have a public, a private um, prices array. And we can say that the price for this ticker is going to be this. And then when we're fetching this, we can just look for, yeah, thank you, Copilot. So I'm actually going to remove this. I'd rather have this fail. So we have this fake implementation. We look for a ticker and we look for the price we have in memory for the ticker and we return that. So we can even say that um, if this isn't set, you can set through an exception and Copilot is pretty much doing this last one for me. And here you could go and um, you could type hint. This. So this is an array uh, of string um, money. So within our task, here's what we can do. We can create an instance of in-memory provider. Thank you, Copilot. Let's import that. We can set the price for our asset. We have the ticker. And we want it to be, you know, let's let's say that it is one dollar. There we go. Whoops. One dollar. So we have the price set for that. Let, let's run this and see what happens. Okay, we're still getting a different value, and that's because we haven't replaced this implementation with our fake one, but we can do that. So let's instead pass our in-memory provider. Let's rerun this, and as you can see, we get a hundred because both the in-memory implementation as well as the real implementation, they all follow the same contract. We have different providers for different situations. And this in-memory provider is merely there for testing. You don't wanna use that in production, but it works. It follows the same contract. So now you can simply test your Coinbase asset information provider in isolation, like I'm doing right here. I have a very simple test and in your actual tasks within your system, you don't have to reach out to the Coinbase API. You can just use this in-memory implementation. Well, if you want to use the container, you can also just replace your object within the container. So we can say that you want to replace our instance of a crypto asset information provider with our in-memory provider. And now we can dispatch this through the framework and we still get 100 and 
That's how I would test this. So in every test of my system that uses this, I would have multiple implementations. And the same goes for payments, the same goes for calendar services. Everything that I might have to test within my system, I will build it in such a way that I can have multiple implementations. And you might think, okay, isn't, isn't that really over-engineering? And it isn't. Um, Swapping providers is, is very common in software development. So this is one of those things where you spend a little bit extra time when you're building your feature. Maybe it's going to take five minutes or 10 minutes more, but it saves you a lot of time. First, it allows you to test things pretty easily with fake objects. And secondly, if you ever need to replace a provider, that is extremely easy. So, you know, you spend five minutes, 10 minutes, Maybe it's possible that you won't ever have to replace your provider. Maybe you're always going to Stripe or you're always going to use Savical. But even then, you can still use fake objects to test your system. And if you happen to change those providers, it is going to be extremely easy because your system will be properly architected to handle those situations. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Very informal video. Let me know what you guys think. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.